Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> I'm sure you've noticed this if you've been uh, paying uh, attention to what's going on in the world, you've been uh, following the news. Um, it seems like today in our world, everybody seems to be offended by something. Uh, so everybody's offended. Uh, maybe it's because of something somebody, they, they saw or they read or they heard. Or maybe it's a discussion they had with somebody else who had a different viewpoint or a different perspective on things. But uh, the immediate reaction, instead of uh, just recognizing that there are differences and, and different things that we might not understand, instead of going that direction, they in fact become irritated. Uh, they become outraged. They become offended. And they want to do something about it. And so they would like to uh, silence those who might say something different than what they believe, or they want to cancel uh, those things that might offend them, that might irritate them, that might hurt their feelings a little bit. We've seen it. Uh, this uh, this uh, nation now, of course, that's offended by everything. And it's not just by what uh, people say or what people do. It could even be uh, being offended by things. Um, a preschool toy in the shape of a potato. Uh, children's books or a children's uh, cartoon that features uh, police dogs and uh, uh, first responder animals uh, or, or maybe um, talking or singing puppets, maybe rice and beans and syrup and even pillows. Apparently, there's no shortage of things out there that can bring somebody some great offense. We live in a society that seems to be offended uh, by, by everything and everyone. And uh, it's a strange world in which we live. But here's a simple fact for us. As God's people, as Christians, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse for us. You see, we have a message to proclaim that is highly offensive to the world. The Apostle Paul says the message, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The message of the cross is foolishness. It's offensive to those who reject it. But to those of us who are being saved, the message of the cross is the power for salvation for all who believe. But the message of the cross is offensive to many people today. And we might wonder, why is that? How could the message of the cross be offensive? I mean, isn't the message of the cross about God's love and, and how Jesus loved us, that he would die for us? How could that offend anyone? Well, it's offensive when we realize why Jesus died. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And we live in a world where no one wants to talk about sin anymore. We live in a world where people try to believe that sin doesn't exist because sin would imply that there's such a thing as some absolute moral truth that exists outside of ourselves that we have to follow. If we don't, then we sin. We live in a world where people don't want to even talk about sin because that would mean there's truth outside of themselves, and it's not about what they feel and about what they think and about their desires, but rather they are accountable to something outside themselves, and we live in a world that doesn't want to talk about that anymore. There are people in the world that just don't want to believe that sin exists, exists, that even though God has written his law upon our hearts and the hearts of all people, and even though God has revealed this absolute moral truth of his law in the Holy Scriptures, there are those who reject God. They say that God doesn't exist and no moral truth can exist. Therefore, I can do what I want, when I want, however I want, and there's no such thing as good or bad. There's no such thing as right or wrong. 
Many people live their lives thinking that sin just simply doesn't exist. But whether they believe sin exists or not, the truth remains. The truth of God's Word is clear. God does exist, and He has revealed His law to us, and we are accountable to that law. Whether we think we are or not, we are accountable to that law. And God has told us very specifically that if we break that law, which is a sin, if we break that law, there are consequences. Whether we believe it or not, there are eternal consequences to sin. God clearly says, he that sins, so shall he die. God clearly says, whether we believe it or not, the wages of sin is death. That's the message of the cross. The message of the cross is that God says clearly sin exists and the consequences of breaking the law, the consequence of sin is serious. God is serious about sin. That's the message of the cross. That's why Jesus died. You know, Jesus, who was perfect in every way, who fulfilled the, the requirements of the law, never strayed, never sinned, Jesus was willing to pay the price for our sins. Not just our sins, but for the sins of even those who reject Him. Jesus was willing to pay the penalty and the price for our sins. He was willing to die for our sins. Not just an ordinary death, but the worst possible death of all. Death on a cross. Jesus willingly endured the cross and everything that it entailed. The suffering, the torment, the ridicule and mockery from the religious leaders, the anger from the Roman government, the hostility. He endured it all. He endured the whipping, the flogging, the crown of thorns, the nails. He chose every bit of it. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And on the cross, he was stricken and smitten and afflicted by our sins. On the cross, Jesus was an offense to the religious leaders who wanted to cancel him. He was an offense to the Roman governors, the Roman government who wanted to destroy him. He was even an offense to the Heavenly Father. Because Jesus had become sin. Your sin and my sin, the sins of all unbelievers, the sins of the entire world, Jesus became sin on the cross and the Heavenly Father had forsaken the Son. And on the cross, Jesus was canceled. He was canceled by our sins. He gave up His life as that sacrifice for the punishment that you and I deserve, He gave up His life on that cross for us. The cross, the message of the cross is that sin is serious and it deserves serious condemnation and, and judgment. And Jesus experienced that serious consequence on the cross. Death. But the message of the cross is also the message of the empty tomb. Jesus did not stay dead and buried. Three days later, he rose again in victory. And because of his death, because of his resurrection, now he has canceled. He has canceled sin. Our sins have been forgiven. He has canceled death. Even death is not the end for those who believe in Jesus. He has canceled the power and authority of even the devil himself. Because of his death and resurrection, Jesus has canceled things. And because of this, because of this, we have so much great joy. For us, the message of the cross is the power of salvation. God in His grace through the Holy Spirit has taken this message of the cross, the message of the uh, cross and empty tomb. He's taken that message. He's uh, proclaimed it to us. And by the Holy Spirit, we believe it. We hold it to be true. We build our lives upon this message. 
A message that God would have all people to be saved. And how will He have all people to be saved? Through the message of the cross. And so the church continues to proclaim this message. Continues to proclaim Christ and Him crucified. Even in a world that doesn't want to hear it. Even in a world that's offended by the message of the cross. Even as we live in a world that wants to silence the message and cancel the cross. This has been the case throughout all of history. In the early church, the the first Christians, the first believers in Christ, they were thrown into their arena where they devoured devoured by wild animals or they were hung on poles and lit as torches and lanterns because people didn't want to hear the message of the cross but the message could not be silenced and the cross could not be canceled and throughout all history we see this even in the middle ages in the the french revolution as the governing authorities wanted to eradicate all religion in the area and they burned churches to the ground and arrested priests. But the message could not be silenced, and the cross could not be canceled. And we see even in the early 1900s with the the Soviet Union coming into power in 1917 and and keeping its power until 1991. In the the age of communism there in the Soviet Union, they wanted to get rid of all religion. Religion. So not only did they burn churches to the ground and arrest the pastors, they killed many, many Christians. Upwards of 12 million Christians killed in the Soviet Union. They persecuted the church. There was one woman of German Lutheran descent whose family had lived in Germany and moved to Russia in the early 1900s. And when communism came to rise, her family was uh, evicted. They attempted to pull her and her husband and children off into Siberia in exile, but she fled through a strange twisting of events. This woman ended up in western Kansas. She taught the faith, the Christian faith, to her children and grandchildren and her family. That was my great-grandmother. The message cannot be silenced. The cross cannot be canceled. Even in today's world, throughout the world and other nations and other countries, with the rise of all kinds of false religions and even atheists who are seeking to destroy anything resembling religion, we see that happening all throughout the world and all nations in Europe and in Asia. There's an organization called uh, Open Doors that keeps track of the persecution that the church is undergoing, the Christians that are suffering uh, for the faith. And they record that last year alone, 4,800 Christians were killed throughout the world, were murdered throughout the world because they bore the name of Christ. 4,500 churches were burned to the ground, and 4,200 believers were imprisoned because they proclaimed Christ. The message of the cross is still foolishness and offensive to the world. But the message cannot be silenced, and the cross cannot be canceled. And here in America, we would be fools to think that we will be immune to this type of persecution. We should not be surprised when we see our religious liberties being slowly taken away from us. We should not be surprised when people see us and are concerned that we are fools, consider us to be offensive because of the message of the Christ. We should not be surprised when the world that we live in says to us as Christians, you could stay in your little church and preach your word, but do not leave these doors. Do not go out into the world. Stay where you are and don't try to influence society by your foolish, offensive teachings. We should not be surprised when this happens. It will happen. 
But the message cannot be silenced, and the cross cannot be canceled. As a church, we will not back down. We will stand our ground. The salvation of the world depends on it. The salvation of people depends upon it. We must go out into the world and fulfill the Great Commission to share the gospel because it's only through the gospel, it's only through the message of the cross that people can be brought from unbelief, the foolishness of unbelief. It's only through the message of the cross that they can be brought to the light of salvation. And that message has to be proclaimed in our age and in every age. That message must be proclaimed because it's only through the gospel that salvation is given. The power of God is given. So we will not back down. We will stand our ground and we will not stay here within these walls. We will go out into the world, into our homes, and teach our children and our children's children the message of the cross. And we will have those relationships with our coworkers and people in our community, and we will look for opportunities to share the message of the cross. And we will go into the civic realm, and we will make sure that we have a voice that voice that, that proclaims Christ crucified. We will do these things. We will keep the Great Commission. We will share the gospel with the world. We will not back down. We will stand our ground, and we will lift high the cross. Because the cross, the message of the cross, proclaims that God so loved the world. We will lift high the cross. And that message cannot be silenced. And the cross cannot be canceled. Amen.